Hello, hello everyone, my name is Exabu and this is part 2 of my coverage of Unity of Command 2's Stalingrad DLC and today we're going to talk about the entirety of its third conference, both historical and alternative history branches and to be quite frank, this conference has cost me uh, quite a few brain cells, if nothing else because of a particular mission in its historic branch which to be honest, I'm finding to be a bit more difficult than the alternative history one. And since you've already seen the thumbnail, that mission is Edelweiss. In addition to its being the most difficult mission of the third conference, there was this little problem that I started the campaign prior to the release of the DLC, and as it usually happens, with the release of the game they actually tweaked the Edelweiss mission because a particular part of it, and we'll talk about it later, was a little too difficult, and trust me, I tried the old version and found it virtually impossible on hard, and eventually I had no choice but to go through the entirety of the campaign up to advice. Since the beginning, thankfully it's just the fifth mission, though there has been a bit of silver lining in all of this. Since I had to go through all of the missions I covered previously, I'd like to give you a couple of additional ideas for these missions. Most importantly, Fileblau 2, which has turned out not to be as difficult as I described it in my previous video, mostly because of a tactical mistake in how to handle that guard's cavalry division and the Secure the Don 2 objective. Which, as you can see, is empty at the beginning and you can drop your flying artillery on that cavalry division, destroy it and then push that motorized division you've got into Secure the Don 2 and just tear the whole road towards Kantimirov, Kamilirov, etc. wide open. Also, Fileblau 2 has been tweaked a little. The Soviet reinforcements coming around Surovikino actually now come a little earlier and you can expect some resistance there. Certainly don't send a very weak tank division into the area. Finally, and this is a cool idea proposed by a regular commenter, you can actually engage your first tank army in meaningful fighting in this mission by setting up bridges across the river west of Vrashilovgrad and pushing the first tank army towards Milerovo, helping cut off the Soviet salient and take those objectives. Also, let me point your direction at the 17th Army HQ. Early in the game you get it both in 2nd Kharkov and in Fileblau 2 and in both of these missions, the HQ and its units play a very supporting secondary tertiary role. However, the HQ is provided with lots of free specialist steps and reinforcements and my recommendation is do not waste them in 2nd Kharkov or in Fileblau 2. Don't give those specialists away to troops, you will need all of that later in Edelweiss where the 17th Army will play a much more important Role. Finally, here's a little thing I discovered in the Fischreier mission, which we will discuss in the moment, but unfortunately I found out about this after I recorded everything, so here it is. If your 24th tank division has a recon step and your 6th army has the recon enforceability, you can actually take Nizhny Chir on turn 1. Move the tank division up to your infantry division, use the recon enforceability to push through that enemy zone of control, then move the infantry division up to Nizhny Cher, which is still not too well entrenched, bomb it, attack it, force the defenders to retreat, and then occupy it with a tank division. This is an extremely way of getting an otherwise, well, reasonably easy objective, but this means that all the troops around Nizhny Cher will start losing their supply right off the bat, making it slightly easier for you later. And now let's look at the actual strategy for the mission. The Fischreier, or Heron, mission kind of reminds me of Fileblau 1 in the sense that the Soviets will be very aggressive in counterattacking here. And as you can see, they have plenty of resources to do it, including a very strong tank division and a crapload of experienced infantry. And just like in Fileblau 1, we will have to use our counterattacking and rearguard tricks to, well, deal with that. My first and general piece of advice 
this is not to focus too many troops on Kletskaya, because it's such an urgent objective you might be tempted to send your tanks there, but try to use as few of your forces as possible. It's a good idea to reinforce and strengthen that infantry division closest to it, and setting up a pontoon bridge right next to it so that you can reach Kletskaya on turn 1 with that infantry division. You might support that attack with a motorized division, and ultimately once you take it, make sure that you give no retreat to the defending unit. Obviously, it's a nice idea if that unit is well equipped once again, like that infantry division with 88mm guns with artillery, defensive stuff. Because the AI is very motivated to attack Kletskaya and will send troops from the northeast and sometimes through Serafimovich from the northwest as well. And speaking of Serafimovich, use those infantry divisions gradually advancing from the crossings to envelop Serafimovich and slowly kick the defenders out. Just make sure you have at least one unit next to it with artillery so that you can launch set piece attacks and destroy their fortifications. The next most urgent objective is Nizhny Cher, and your approach to it should kind of echo what you did in Kletskaya, i.e. beef up the infantry division closest to it, try to clear the area south of the river on turn 1 and approach Nizhny Cher. It's a good idea to send one more infantry division to support the main attackers. It's generally not too good of an idea to send the tanks there, they'll be needed elsewhere. And finally, I've also so found that the flying artillery you give in is best used at Nizhny Cher. Its defenders are pretty well entrenched in there, and you're not gonna have too many troops defending that objective. And finally, let's shift our sights at the nastiest bits of all. Golubinskaya. And because Surovikino is such a non-urgent objective, the natural temptation is to push through Kletskaya towards Golubinskaya through all of those hills, send all of your tanks in there and do all of that, and I've found it to be a bad idea because the Soviets A are very aggressive and B as you can see they have plenty of troops including that tank division and because the hills there are very difficult terrain you're not going to be able to move very quickly there it's very likely that the Soviets will encircle your units destroy them or at least prevent you from taking or holding Golubinska so you really need to weaken the enemy first mostly that tank division before you get to Golubinska and this is the reason and you need to use as few troops in Kletskaya and Nizhny Cher as you can. Right off the bat, on turn 1, send your tanks and as many other troops that you can spare towards Surovikino and east of it. Use that gap to push your tanks in, but make sure that your 6th Army HQ has enough command points to give them counterattacks. Because what will happen on the first Soviet turn is that they'll counterattack and try and destroy these tank divisions. But if your tank divisions there are strong and provided with counterattack ability, it will turn into a complete massacre for the Soviets. On your second turn, you'll pretty much be picking up the pieces from that entire area. And I've also found that if you do really well south of Kletskaya and deal enough damage, the AI will be severely discouraged from attacking Kletskaya. In my best playthrough of this mission, which you can find on Slothobo, I didn't even entrench the infantry division that was sitting in Kletskaya because it was not targeted by any attacks. And obviously with this kind of situation on the front, of the Kino is gonna fall on turn 2 easily, which is a nice boost to your supply situation. And then rushing your tanks or motorized divisions towards Golubinska is a no-brainer. Leave a no retreat, leave a counterattack ability, whatever, and just hold all of those objectives. Ah, oh, Edelweiss, I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you. This mission is a bit controversial for me, not least because it forced me to replay the campaign, but overall this is the most difficult mission up to this point in the campaign. And with its extreme size, very distant objectives and some nasty Soviet counterattacks, it's no slouch and it will kick your butt if you're not well prepared. And let me just immediately tell you to get the no retreat ability to the fourth Panzer army HQ 
and make sure that the 29th Motorized Division, deployed near Timiansk now, is strong, experienced, and well equipped. It will become the most important division in this whole theater very, very soon. So, where do you start with this whole mess? Because you get a huge mess of the first and the fourth tank armies around Semikarakorsk, and it is actually a hint of what to do with your Panzer armies. A, the fourth Panzer army will take care of Obganervo and Lista. Make sure you return that tank division belonging to the fourth uh, that's stuck near Rostov, because you'll use it to take a Lister, which will not be difficult. It'll have the same defenders when you reach it. Just make sure you reserve the air supply you're provided with to actually feeding that tank advancing towards the Lister. Obviously, oversupply is your friend, and once the Lister is yours, send that tank towards Petrovska and help out with taking that uh, little town. The rest of the fourth army will push towards Abganervo, and this is the place that got tweaked. While it doesn't look like anything crazy, on turn six, the Soviets will get crap loads of very powerful reinforcements. And if you get to Abganervo and think that it's a lot, it used to be even worse. So the trick to not just taking up Ganerva, but also holding it, is to obviously keep that 29th motorized division as powerful as possible, so that it can actually discourage the enemy attacks, even though they will come. In which case, you use no retreats, because it discourages the AI from counterattacking once it knows that there is a no retreat token. And the other trick is being very aggressive about your defense. The AI is very jealous about all of the hexes northwest and to a lesser degree east of Abganerva, and fighting for where reasonable and moving into those hexes will force the AI to disperse its attacks, get into costly fighting, and ultimately, hopefully, stop harassing Abganerva. So seriously, hold up Ganerovo at all costs. Throw those Romanian divisions into the mouth of war and make the AI think that you are the one who's attacking. And at this point, you have this obvious and very reasonable question of how do I supply this whole enterprise? And this is going to be the immediate objective of the first tank army. Use all of its troops exclusively to clear the railway section between Rostov and Proletarsk. The Soviet supply hub in the Salsk area will be a very nice way of feeding your troops stuck in the north, around Proditarsk and Semikarakorsk. In any case, ensuring a secure supply for your fourth tank division by the end of turn three is more or less your goal. And you should certainly avoid the temptation of going directly through Azov, Tikharet, etc. Those rear guard Soviet units will just slow you down, and actually directly pushing forward will be the 17th Army's objective. So the 17th should push through Azov, deal as much damage to all of these rear guards as possible, ideally reaching the bridge south of Azov on turn one. The other, and I think more important objective for the 17th army, is to guard the railway line between Rostov, Salsk and Proletarsk as the first tank army is clearing them, and make sure those defenses are tight, you can't really afford losing your supply, and especially your HQ losing its supply near Rabganerovo. So once the first tank army clears the railway line, it should pivot south and split into two. Its most powerful formations must drive southwest towards Tikhoretsk and Krasnodar. Ideally, this will completely envelop the bulk of the Soviet troops in the area, and in conjunction with the 17th Army, you'll just destroy all of that pocket. And obviously, these tanks and motorized divisions should push towards Krasnodar and possibly take it. As you approach the city, build bridges across the river just east of it, and on turn 6 or 7, send a bunch of your troops to take my cop. Ideally, you should already have a bunch of Romanian cavalry divisions in the area, and while they don't really pack a punch, you can actually send them to take the hex. Actually, the same is true about Anapa, which is never defended, and getting an important but fast unit in there, like Romanian cavalry, is a good idea. If you manage to take 
take all three Krasnodar, my Kop, and an up on time, I don't think you're gonna have any trouble dealing with Hadizhensk. The deadline is reasonably lax, so you'll probably be able to bring a lot of troops into the area, and that place is not going to be very well fortified or defended. Alright, now back to the rest of the first army that did not go to Krasnodar. These will push to the east, where obviously the supply situation will be somewhat difficult. You don't exactly need top-of-the-line units there, but do send your HQ into that area to kind of extend that supply through emergency supplyability. Taking Stavropol and its supply hub is a good idea, it's usually empty, and it feeds Petrovska, so Stavropol falling into your hands on turn 6 is good timing. You can set up your own supply hub just west of Stavropol using that little road, and then rush your rover supplied units to go to Petrovska, maybe that tank division from Alyssa will help, and more importantly Petigorsk because there will be no help and you probably will only have one division around that area. It's very likely that by the time the deadline for Petigorsk comes, some of your 17th army troops will advance along the railway between Tsikoretsk, Armavir, and Nivinomisk, and perhaps let you set up a more convenient supply hub. And finally, don't forget to move your Romanian and 17th army HQs so that they provide their ability I actually had to restart this mission a couple of times because I forgot to move my 17th army and just could not build the bridges between Krasnodar and my cop because they were just a hex out of range. After Redelweiss, this reasonably difficult mission will feel like child play, and let's start with the easier part that you can handle with this very special trick. So if your 24th tank division still has that recon step, and it should, you can immediately rush it north towards the Marinovka, Karpovka area and block the railway line feeding everything west of it. This is critical for the success of the mission because one, by turn five, Kalach will be completely suppressed and you'll just take it. Two, all of the rest of the area will be completely suppressed and you'll just easily destroy everyone there. Most importantly, the unit guarding the crossing at Logovsky. As you can see, this is the only thing resembling a railway connection that you can get in this area and repairing it will be critical in your ability to actually handle the objectives near Stalingrad. Also, don't get too attached to the whole Abganerovo area. Use the 4th Tank Army's mobile troops to raid the areas north of Abganerovo, once again securing the railway, helping to take Kalach, and once the railway is secure, you must move everything in that area towards southern approaches, including the HQ, including the supply hub, none of this is worth your time. And Lake Sarpa will have to wait until later in the mission. And now let's look at the more difficult and maybe slightly more annoying part of the mission, which is obviously in the north. The Don Bend and Sarotinska objectives are very urgent, and if you try this mission, you'll very quickly realize that taking Sarotinska on turn 2 and then Don Bend on turn 3 is virtually impossible. Possible. You will just not be able to push through the Soviet screens to take Don Bend. So instead, you should obviously push in both the directions, but focus on Sirotinska and taking it on turn one. This is a prime location for one of your flying artilleries. Try to push your mobile troops as close to Don Bend while using as much infantry as you can to take Sirotinska. And obviously, no retreat is of huge help in this place because the Soviets will indeed try to counterattack here, but once you survive it, push towards Don Bend, which is the target for your second flying artillery. Trust me, these two objectives are the most difficult in the mission, and once you have dealt with them, all the other objectives are not going to be too difficult. Plus, the enemy troops between Don Bend and Sirotinskaya will run out of supply. And once both of these objectives are yours, build a bridge leading directly to Don Crossing or somewhere near it, whatever you can, and on subsequent turns, Send all of your mobile units that belong to the 6th Army across the Don, take Don Crossing and push 
East. You really need none of them to take Kaminskaya. Your infantry should be enough, just make sure you have artillery steps, plus you'll get a tank division later in that area. And while the advance towards Kaminskaya will be a bit slow, you have plenty of time to deal with that objective through the usual city fighting tactics of feint attacks and set piece attacks. Alright, back to the divisions that actually crossed the river. One of them, and I'm afraid to say it will probably have to be one of your stronger units, will have to rush to Volga. That general area will be empty, though I recommend using recon on Gorodice and in the areas around it, or just avoiding those Stalingrad city hexes because you may inadvertently move into the zones of control and get stuck there. Volga itself will probably be defended, but I doubt it's going to be someone very strong, but you will have to keep that strong tank or motorized division in that hex and protect it, which is why you should avoid using your air supply on anything else. Finally, the combined forces of the 4th Army bring all of your infantry and some of the motorized units of the 6th Army should come together west of the southern approaches objective. You'll probably face some resistance from the Soviet tanks. Feel free to use your Romanian divisions as decoys and lures because the area is flat and you have air support dispatching these tanks will not be too difficult. Just make sure you don't lose sight of Lake Sapa. Approaching that hex from the north is a little tricky, so make sure you have a lot of troops touching that hex by turn 8. And while taking southern approaches is not going to cause you too much trouble, those Soviet tanks will often just leave it empty, make sure you use a strong unit to guard the hex, because the AI will not hesitate to send all of its troops in Stalingrad to clear that hex if you leave someone weakened there. Final points, both the Don Crossing and Lake Sarper objectives give you supply truck cards, so feel free to use these as you see fit during the mission. Ironically, though, from a realistic point of view, the whole premise of Unternehmen Blücher is nearly impossible. The mission itself isn't too difficult, especially compared to some of those gems that you need to deal with a bit later and immediately before the scenario. Well, in addition to this whole cool landing aspect. So your main initial landing should be at Tamang, which is super easy. Send a strong division next to Tamang, weaken the defense and then send another landing craft into the objective itself, set up an HQ, prepare, etc, etc. Send one of your landing divisions and the power troopers to the area next to Anapa. You will reach that place in two turns, so supply is not a problem. And with a foothold like this in the area, you'll take Anapa in no time. It is at this point that you'll realize that you've been provided with a bouncy of all sorts of artillery. And I don't think I need to tell you that it's mostly going to be used in the area around Novorossiysk and Krimsk. So push all of your infantry around Taman and all of the reinforcements you're getting there. Northeast, the Soviets in that area generally are not very aggressive and tend to retreat to the actual objectives they need to hold. And so once you get out of that tiny Taman Peninsula, you need to split your forces into three. The best equipped, the heaviest artillery equipped guys go to Krimsk, Novorossiysk, and the other two groups will work in unison and go to to the northeast, and obviously once you take both Norosysk and Krimsk, neither of which is a big deal, it's very much a set-piece attack engineers and artillery affair, but the troops going to the northeast one of these groups should go east of Krimsk and towards Krasnodar, south of the river. You just cut any enemy reinforcements and counterattacks from the south, which actually might come, I've seen it once you take Krasnodar, and the other group will follow that river from the north and in the direction of Timashevsk. Most of these troops should be focused around Krasnodar. It's very likely to be pretty well defended by the time you reach it, while the naval base will be roughly as poorly defended as it 
it is at the beginning of the mission, as you can see, with the exception of additional fortifications. So a German infantry division and maybe someone to support it would be a good idea. It's very likely that you'll probably be able to free up some troops once you take Krasnodar. In any case, the trickiest bit about naval base is just having enough troops in that general area by the time the deadline starts approaching. Kalwach is the ahistoric version of the fish hire mission we've already discussed today, and although the number of troops you provided with is significantly higher, the same is true for the Soviets and the mission can get really tricky. Tricky also in the sense of deceptive, because you can see that gap next to the river near Nizhny Chir. It's really inviting a pontoon bridge there and maybe the main thrust of your attacks towards artillery positions 1, 2 and 3, especially 3, for weird reasons, need to be taken first. And to be honest, I actually tried it and it doesn't work that well. You can reach position 3 by turn 4, but all of the other ones are kind of... Ugh. Nevertheless, you should use this gap, build the pontoon bridge and advance your infantry through it. Its goal will be to take rail bridge and first and foremost block that railway leading from artillery position to rail bridge. Also in the south, forget about the salient at Kotelnikovo, just guard the bridges at Simyansk and Kotelnikovo with your weakest units, prevent the Soviets from getting through, and send all of your infantry north and across the bridge if necessary. Use your judgment for where you need additional troops to hold the front, even though the Soviets are relatively not aggressive along the original front line, and choose what infantry divisions should go across the bridge, maybe better ones, more experienced ones, better equipped ones. In any case, since the southern trickier route is your supporting push, your main strike will be, well, not surprisingly, through Kalach. It's the name of the mission after all. So if you look at the front line between Rail Bridge and Kletskaya, you will immediately see a weak point, a three-step, well-fortified but regular Soviet division. This is where you'll breach the front, weaken the better experienced defenders with the ATs, a couple of faint attacks should disable its AT step, and then send your tank division, which you should equip as best as possible. I found, as you can see, the Stug engineer combination to be perfect. It's a huge bonus to attack capability. So send that division to breach these two enemy formations and reach the river and build a pontoon bridge across it. This is the key to succeeding in this mission. But before we get to taking the artillery positions, let's look at the north, at the Romanian sector of the front. And let me just immediately tell you to remove all of the troops west of Serafimovic. You don't need any of that ground. Retreat all of those troops, use them to hold your front lines. You'll eventually need them around Sorovikino as the Germans get into all of the breaches, let alone that cavalry division, which is actually pretty nice for your frontline service. And to be honest, you really don't need more than three or four Romanian divisions to take Serafimovic. What I did was set up two Romanian divisions with artillery steps in them and just keep pummeling the defenders with set-piece attacks. There is a 25% chance of removing their fortifications. The enemy HQ doesn't really renew those fortifications. So once they run out, once again, launch a set-piece attack and then beat them up, even if it involves some of your losses. You've got eight turns, plenty of time to do it, although Railbridge gives you a sabotage card so you can actually blow the bridge behind Serafimovic and let those defenders starve. All right, now back to artillery positions. On turn two, you push your tanks, your motorized troops and the nearest infantry divisions into that breach, move around Kalach. It's a good idea to actually take the town and destroy the supply hub and block that railway line once again feeding the troops west of it. This will effectively cripple most of the Soviet front line between Rail Bridge and Kletska. Just make sure that the guys in the south also block that bridge. Rail Bridge itself is not that urgent, but I still recommend taking it on turn two or three. But as you succeed around Kalaj, 
just rush your tanks and take all of those artillery positions. I've pretty much never seen position 3 being defended unless it had units that retreated to it or something. So you are very likely to take it empty, but taking it will activate the Soviet tanks around Kotelnikovo. So make sure you have a strong unit in there, a motorized division or ideally an infantry division with the 88mm anti-tank gun specialist step which will prevent any attempts by the Soviets to actually rush their tanks and try and take that hex. Position 1 will also be empty and position 2, while it will take some combat, use your feint attacks to disable the AT specialist step and just push your tanks in there once again. It's a flat hex, you don't have to worry about very tenacious defenders. However, as you take artillery position 1 and especially position 2, make sure that the Soviets never get to attack the hex at position 2. Because as you can see, they have very strong infantry divisions in Stalingrad and will almost certainly wipe out anything you leave in position 2, except for maybe your tank division. So as you take these northern positions, use your troops in that area and flood as many as you can in there so that you can actually pull this off to actually hold the hexes immediately adjoining Stalingrad, forcing the AI to kind of breach through them and then through zones of control to actually reach artillery position 2, which the AI will almost certainly not do and you will not have to worry about defending position position 2 and probably a position 1 as well anymore. Also, once all of these positions are yours and maybe sort of a miniature still isn't, I found that killing these tank divisions might be a little difficult. So to avoid too many losses among your infantry, once again, these divisions are pretty strong. Leave your infantry in the forests, in the hills, don't leave them in open terrain. Caspian Shores is so big that it sounds like the beginning of a nasty joke. The mission briefing tells you that the distance from one sea to the other is like from Paris to Munich, and it kind of is. And that magical objective in the end is like the game saying, yeah, catch me if you can! Though in fairness, magical is not the most difficult objective if you manage to do everything else. So let's take this one apart. So let's start with the easiest bit, with the 1st uh, Tank Army and the 17th Army. Their initial objective is very simple. Cross the river, you can actually build a pontoon bridge into a gap in there right from the start, and then rush towards Salsk and maybe southeast towards Sikoretsk. In addition to Salsk being an objective, the critical part of this whole enterprise in the north is that the entire eastern part of the map will be supplied through Rostov. And so maintaining a railway connection between Rostov, Antikoretsk and Armavir, etc, etc, will be critical for you. So clear those railways, you can do it through Salsk if it's too difficult to go directly to Tikhoretsk. Just make sure you do it as quickly as possible. Taking these railways will also block the supply lines to all of the Soviet troops south of Tikhoretsk, even though they are very low priority. And as soon as you can, send all of the 1st Tank Army troops east. They will sorely be needed their 17th army, well, whatever you can get to the east, but they're probably going to be too slow for that. All right, let's look at the south, where it's going to be slightly more complex. The most obvious bit is break through just south of Krasnodar and send all of the troops of the 4th tank army east towards my cop. Touching that bridge west of my cop by the end of turn 1 is required. Actually, I've found that if you go past that bridge on turn 1, the AI loves blowing the bridges after it. So weirdly, don't be too zealous about it. Your tanks should be as quick about this as possible because Stavropol is a bit tough to reach and it is defended. Weakly, but defended. So get those tanks and motorized divisions as far and as fast as you can. This is the story for this entire mission. You may use your infantry division from that army to take my cop. I actually sent my flying artillery there just to take it very quickly. Make sure it actually hold it, you're not going to be able to clear that whole area. But the whole point is that the 4th army, just like the 1st, should not stop anywhere and rush 
to the east. On the other hand, Munstein's 11th army is gonna take it slow. Its sole objective will be to upset, and there are a couple of points to make about it. One, you don't need any of the troops northwest of Krasnodar. Leave someone in Krasnodar to defend it and send all of the rest to help with Tuapse. The second point here is advancing towards Tuapse along the seacoast is a stupid idea. Even though you are very likely to end up with very experienced and well-equipped divisions there. The Soviets have very good defenders and it's not very easy because of the terrain. So clear that whole area, the Soviets are not gonna attack and send them along the road north of Tuapse. Clearing the hills west of Tuapse, gradually doing so, is also not the worst idea, but clearing that road and then reaching to Apsa proper is your ultimate objective, and it is very much a story of set-piece attacks and feint attacks to gradually squeeze the defenders out and ultimately reaching the town. Also, remember that the Soviets will counterattack if you are hosing the town with someone weak. So make sure you have a strong division nearby to grab it with once it's empty. And so this is it for the mission away. This, oh my god, there's so much past Stavropol. The good news is that Stavropol gives you another flying artillery, and you might need to use it elsewhere. You're very likely to take Stavropol on turn 4, I don't think it's possible to take it earlier. And in the area between Stavropol and Mozdok, it is critical not to stop. There aren't many defenders, they are not very powerful, but they are very annoyingly placed. So do everything not to let them hold your troops up, especially your best tank divisions. The first army is likely to be a little behind. Use its assets to destroy these divisions or make them weaker and clear the railway also to provide you with supplies because just taking Mozdok on deadline is not enough. Because by the end of the mission, the Soviets are getting crap loads of reinforcements in the east of the map, and if you look at where they will be positioned on turn 7, you will see that they will form a neat little line near Mosdok. The reinforcements will be very strong, guards infantry with elite experience, so your task, in addition to taking Mosdok, is holding those hexes on the same turn. And to do that, you will need a lot of forces in that area and to do that you need to bring them there first. This is the whole point of being as fast as you can between Stavropol and Mozdok. Because this is where the scenario gets a little tricky. The Soviets will get another wave of reinforcements around Grozny and because of the terrain you will almost certainly not be able to prevent those. So your main thrust of both of your tank armies should be directed at Grozny, breaching through it and taking that hex. Don't even think you will be able to actually go through it. The place will be flooded with Soviet divisions, so taking the town with one of your strongest divisions and giving the no retreat orders, counterattack, whatever, is a really good idea, and so is the idea of sending a flying artillery to Grozny to soften up those defenders, which will also be pretty powerful at that point. If you don't want to use your flying artillery twice, use it on Grozny. My cop will just take more losses if you don't. In addition to the main thrust at Grozny, you should allocate two or three motorized and tank divisions to push along the railway line north of Grozny. They must belong to the same tank army, and that army's HQ must be pushed along with them. These guys will go to Mahachkala. It's actually a good idea to set up a pontoon bridge just west of Grozny to make it easier to shuffle units in and out, especially since you have to battle the Soviet units guarding the railway junction just north of Grozny to just prevent any Soviet flanking attacks in the area and to clear that railway line leading north towards Kislyar. So at this point, oversupply two highly mobile units and push them across that pontoon bridge north of Grozny. Then set up a supply hub in the middle of that empty area, sending the appropriate tank army HQ there is also a good idea, and then just rush these motorized divisions to Mahachkala, it's not gonna be better protected than what you see now, and to say motorized divisions, even if not particularly well equipped, will handle it very easily, and note that there is an airport next to Mahachkala, so supplying that breach is not gonna be too difficult, also don't expect any counterattacks there once you take it.
And this is it for today, a very difficult conference, mostly because of Edelweiss. And I'm really looking forward, or maybe not, not sure yet, to everything that the future conferences have in store. So if you'd like to see more of this playthrough and maybe get a few valuable tips on how to crack these missions, like, subscribe, comment, and until next time, cheers.